is coming down now. And the thunder is booming. I was uh, doing seven kilometers an hour just ruddering. Potatoes, baked beans, and hamburger. Here you go, Oh yeah. Never misses. Oh, you're kidding me. I just took the wrong portage. I knew this one seemed so long. Oh, here comes some more rain. We are there. The moon is out here. I still got a little ways to go. Can you make it, Maddie? Can you get ready for bed? <laughs> oh, this just never gets old. You might as well do a rain dance. Tarp. It's just all, all squishy here. It's infected for sure. Okay, let's go. So we're sitting here at the uh, at the first portage, and uh, I think we'll uh, we'll get going. We're just coming in on our second portage here. This is just a little uh, offshoot portage right over here. So I put down the boat and pack for a second and just get a little shot of this. Very beautiful. Nice start. We're just coming into our third portage. This is the uh, 2.3K coming up. I just did a uh, 300 and a 695. And I'm pretty relieved. This is the longest solo trip I've done. And with an 81 pound pack, I um, I had a few concerns. I mean, it's certainly heavy, but it's nothing that's uh, putting me off. I'm on the uh, 2.3 kilometer portage. This is only going to be my one of my worst ones because my pack is at its heaviest. It's the full 81 pounds right now and uh, I've got a 3.8 kilometer later in the trip but that's at about the halfway mark actually a little past the halfway mark so I'll make it a lot uh, a lot easier but so far it really hasn't been too bad I wasn't sure how 81 pounds was going to work with me but I did get a new boat and it's light. It uh, weighs in at about uh, 38 pounds, brand new. And once I put everything in it, my paddles, my bungee cores, my baler, all of that, it hits about, uh, um, curious with rocks here. Then it hits about, uh, uh, 48 pounds so well I say it's going good here but I really just got started we'll see how it how I'm doing come the end of it but I was looking forward to this portage because it's gonna be a very telling one I find it doesn't take much of an incline to really take it out of you well I just got done another big long incline holy cow i think we're about to oh we've got to be at 2k by now um this is a 2.3 i am just absolutely drenched i'm out of water so i'm looking forward to getting to the end just so i can uh, pump some i can feel it in my hips now I'm starting to get a little sore it's just 130 pounds just a lot of weight i have to always have the option of going to a double carry but um I'll just give my body a little bit of time to adjust here and see how we do. Well, I forgot about the other two portages after that 2.3. Finished 2.3. That was uh, enlightening. Um, and then there's a 170 after that, which I'm on right now. And then an 80 after that. And then we're in the Catfish Lake. Um, yeah, I resorted to a double carry on this one. I never do double carries, but I think I'm reaching my my limits and I'm gonna have to consider doing some doubles at least 
at the beginning of this trip. I don't want to uh, injure myself or pull something. And I could really feel my legs starting to uh, to weaken and starting to get a little wobbly. Well, here we are now, home sweet home. Catfish Lake, we're in a little uh, group of islands here. God, can I be careful here? Anywhere that you got a steep hill with uh, pine needles on it. It's uh, very slippery. This is just like walking on ball bearings here. So you really want to make sure you really uh, plant your foot. So I'm going to set up a little bench here. Nice view. I think I'll probably set up the tent, have a little quick something to eat, and uh, I think I'll be going to bed. Glad to be here. So this is how you make um, applesauce with berries. What I have here, I've got some sheets of dried applesauce. So you want to do is you want to take this and break it up into smaller pieces here. You can also have this just as a, like a little fruit roll up. Take some berries. These are some dried strawberries, raspberries, and uh, blueberries. So I'll just fill this here up. So there's 200 mils, and I'll put the rest in here for the berries. And uh, we could rehydrate it together, but I know exactly how much applesauce I need in here, or how much I need for the applesauce. And then for the, uh, for the berries, it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna be draining off whatever's left. The applesauce has to be exact. So we're gonna let that sit for uh, Oh, about 10, 15, 20 minutes. Let's take a look here. These things here tend to rehydrate quite quickly. Oh yeah. So you can see here, little sheets here, and there we go. We've got piping hot applesauce. How are our berries doing? Yep, looking good. They're not much to look at. They look a little a little haggard but uh, the taste is definitely there and the water you can just drink that like a juice just put a little bit of that in there and there we go oh actually I have uh, there we go and then a little drizzle of, uh, of honey There you have it. Applesauce with berries and honey. Oh yeah. Super. Well, it's the first day down, and uh, it was a it was a good day. It was it was pretty tough but I was really running on empty, so uh, with the portages in there and the, uh, and the travel, it was only 15 kilometers, but that was starting off later in the day. I didn't get started until about 1.30, so I didn't really have a lot of time to stop for, for much in the way of break, so it was pretty much about uh, five hours solid, and uh, I've been getting about four or five hours sleep this last week, so I think I'm gonna need to do a little bit of uh, catching up with the pack being uh, 81 pounds, it uh, I may end up doing some double carries uh, just to keep from being miserable. It's not too bad for about one click, uh, but once you start getting into two, it uh, it starts getting pretty tough. The my hips start to really hurt. I can feel the the pressure right in in here on my hips and my legs will start to get a little bit wobbly, start to get a little tired, and you just really not, you just really never want to get to that point where you're feeling like your legs are not necessarily going to hold out whenever they, uh, whenever they should, because if you go down with 81 pounds on your back and a boat on your head, not much good will, uh, will come of that, especially if you're going out uh, solo. I'm just going to go to bed early. It's about 8.15 right now, and uh, I think if I can 
get some serious Z's in there. Maybe I'll get up at like 7 or 8 or something like that and I'll give me a, enough sleep that I should uh, be able to catch up and get going. Nice, I just got to bed and uh, the moment I climbed in the tent it started to rain, which is perfect. I always enjoy a little uh, rain in the evening, it helps me sleep. <laughs> I don't think Maddie's going to need any help. So Maddie's been playing down there for about an hour. <laughs> this is just in the morning here. I'm just packing up. I think she's going after frogs and water spiders. I'm not, uh, not entirely sure. But she's having a great time. <laughs> Normally I just bring my map and compass, but this time I brought the GPS. I just wanted to get some numbers on my speeds, and right now I'm, uh, I'm turned away from the wind at this point because the uh, wind was causing a lot of wind noise on the camera, but I'm heading on the, uh, uh, in a bit of a headwind, and I'm paddling just a comfortable stroke, and I'm doing about uh, 3.5 kilometers an hour. Now if I really dig in, I can pull it to about... 4, 4.5, and that's not too hard. So anyways, I think calculating distance, especially for solo trips, counting on about uh, 3.5 kilometers an hour is pretty safe. So apparently I need to go through this. Should be interesting. Doesn't really look uh, terribly passable. So we've made it around Looks like this is going to uh, get us where we want to go. I can hear the wind really picking up. That's going to be right against us. We're going to be going through here, but uh, should be doable. We're on the first portage of the day. This is a 360, and I am doing a double carry this time. So I've just got my pack. Um, it's actually not a whole lot lighter than yesterday because I didn't eat a dinner last night. I just had the snacks I had with me. Been having some problems with my gear, my backpack. The uh, I've been having issues here. You can see I've tied this together. But here, this side here is broken off. So it will still clip. But just not, uh, not as well. I don't have the confidence in it. You can see here that it's really kind of bending out here on this side. So what I've been doing is tying this piece and this piece here together to try to hold it steady. So it's too bad this is only day uh, day two. I also broke a buckle on the back of the pack, the, which holds the top of the pack down. And uh, that was my own fault. It was... Uh, the pack was falling down. I went to grab it and I grabbed it from that, uh, from the top of the pack, the pouch there over top. And that's not supposed to take that kind of weight. And that broke. It's the same thing, broke on one side, but the other side is still okay. So it's still working, but I really have to be careful with it. And geez, eight days to go. I imagine I'm going to have to come up with some alternative. I think we're about halfway through our day here, and we are now getting threatened with thunder. So I have a feeling the portage is maybe offering me a little bit of refuge from what's to come here. All right, well, here comes the rain, so I'm going to see if I can get my jacket out of my, my uh, backpack. <laughs> Look at this right here. Perfect little canoe driveway. I'm going to pull into there, and that should keep me nice and stable so I can move around. This would probably be an animal track here. we got a beaver dam right here. And this is probably where my moose or bear or deer come in to get a drink or uh, to enter into the river. Don't have too much further to get to the uh, portage. This is where we have come from here. It is looking pretty bleak in here. This looks like it's dusk. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, it is dark. Oh yeah, here comes the rain. 
it is teeming now. I just pulled off to the side. This is about the driest bit I can find here. It's by this big tree. Just giving a little bit of shelter, but it is coming down now. All right, well, we got the boat and uh, the rain is still coming down. I mean, the path is basically a river. What are you gonna do? I'm just hoping that I'm gonna be able to get some uh, some relief from this rain because I got a little ways to go yet. Well, we're stopped now and uh, I managed to get the boat up over a, uh, a fallen tree here. I got my pack underneath it here and I'm just sitting on my pack and Maddie and I are just staying dry under our little makeshift shelter here. The only uh, the only issue is just when the hell we're going to be able to get out of here. Uh, I'm going to go check the end of the trail, see what we have. I don't know how much wet this camera can take, because it's pretty moist right now, I can tell you that. This is our little shelter here. Put my pack under there. I'm going to go check out the trail here and see what's up. Well, there's no rest for the wicked here. Uh, it's still raining and thunder, but still no lightning. So now I've got everything is by the water, ready to go. Got my hat over my camera right now, trying to save it. I'm getting soaked. So I got the boat and the pack down here. I just need to like get just over there, not very far. It's not going to get me to anywhere permanent, but get me one step closer and you kind of got to take what you can get as you get it. So it's a little calmer now. So I think I make, I might make a, uh, make a run for it. And that's an 80 portage. And then, uh, a little teeny tiny, like I think it's even smaller than this one. And then that will take me to, uh, another campsite possibly that I could stay at, but I've got to with another push of about three kilometers in a little stream there. So, <laughs> Maddie's back in the water playing. We love chasing the bugs. Alright, I think we'll make a run for it. Again, no lightning, so that's good. So we're coming up to our next portage. Hmm, this is what we're portaging around here. That doesn't look too bad. I think we're going to see if we can make our way through that, even if I pull the boat behind me. That might be worth it. I'm already soaked, so it doesn't make any difference. Oh, well. There are some fun times here, Chris. Alright, great. So we managed to dodge that portage. There's where we'd be coming out. Always love that seeing the beginning and the end of a portage, but I don't set foot on it. Um, yeah, the rain is letting up. The sky isn't looking much better, and the thunder is just rolling along. But it doesn't bother me as long as we're not getting any lightning, and it's nice that we're not getting any more rain, so I'll take it. So we made it to our 360 portage. Taking the boat first this time around. Um, yeah, doing the, the double portage has actually turned out to be really good. It's turned an absolutely devastating portage, with the longer ones especially, into really no problem at all. It just takes longer, which could be an issue because I didn't accommodate for that extra time for these trips. And some of the days are like 23 kilometers with, well, one of them is... 15 portages But this is really much better. I'm really glad it's that the rain has calmed down and the thunder has still been rolling but not nearly as much as it was uh, As it was earlier So I think it may be on its way out and I think it took some of the wind with it unless it's just because I'm in a more of a more of a sheltered area here It's hard to say Oh yeah, here we go. Wow, yeah, that is nice paddling right there. Beautiful. Well, we got our pack and our boat here. You know, it was looking nice there for a little while. 
the thunder is letting go a little bit. And still no lightning, so uh, I think we'll probably see what we can do. Here's a raccoon's favorite spot to eat. You can see they take all the clams and pull them up here. This place is loaded. Anyways, we're back in the boat. Damn it, I just saw lightning over here. I didn't get very far and came back here. This is the end of the portage I just got off of because um, lightning is out now. So now I've got uh, I've got that to worry about. It was funny actually. Right here I saw two frogs jumping up. Right here, trying to get into the bushes. It's too wet even for the frogs. Not even they're liking it. And poor Maddie here, well, she's finally collapsed, but she's having a hard time. She's not enjoying this at all. Okay, so it slowed down a little bit. I just grabbed the boat, grabbed my stuff, threw it in, and off we go. So we're going to make a run for it and see if we can get to, uh, to the next site. I'm not seeing any lightning. I'm just going to try, try to stay as close to shore as we can, see if we can get to that site. And by the time we get there, it's shaping up, then we'll see if we can continue further. Poor girl. Wow, I can hear and see the rain over there. And it's coming over this way. You can always, always love it whenever you can see it and you're not feeling it yet. Yeah, here it comes. Boy, oh boy, just not catching the break. Anyways, we're on our way. Not much we can do now, but keep going forward. Going down here. Yeah, here it comes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, here we go. It is just pouring again. I've stopped under this overhanging tree here. And uh, I got a bale. We got a lot of water in the boat now. Still not at the campsite or the portage, but we have no choice. We will proceed. All right, well, we just got a little break. I'm amazed this camera's still working. It's just completely soaked. Looking nice over here. Got the low fog on the hills. Thunder is still threatening. I am completely soaked. Maddie is just miserable. I really am looking forward to this day coming to an end, to be honest. Although, I am making a decision to press on because right here is a campsite, so we could stop here. But it's really just not far enough along. To but look at this! The sun is out. Wow, that's a, that's a switch. And the other thing which is actually really nice about this trip in general, this is the middle of August and there are no bugs. Although the weather has not been great today, putting it mildly, I haven't had to deal with bugs. So that's good. Poor Maddie is absolutely desperate to get out of the boat at this point. I keep on having to stop her from jumping out. You can see that we're by land here. And she keeps on going to jump out of the boat. And actually, I think that is our campsite, so it's going to be one happy dog. Here's our campsite. Oh, boy, Maddie, you ready? Okay, Goose. Okay, Maddie. Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, joy. <laughs> we are now on our campsite on Burnt Root. The site we planned to land on. It's about 6.30 right now. And uh, nice little place. Fairly, uh, fairly large. The sun is really out now, which is great. 
nice change. Just set my feet dry off right now. They look like they're belong to an 80 year old at this point. You can actually see the marks of the fabric in my skin here, my socks. Um, anyways, just gonna let them dry it a little bit and then put on these shoes which are dry and I keep in them a pair of uh, a pair of socks and it's just locked bags that way. Once I get my shoes out, I am good to go. I don't have to go looking through my clothes bag for my uh, for my dry socks. Times like this, I want to change immediately. I've got the wet clothes and the uh, material here all hanging up to dry now. Got it hitting the sun as much as possible. And uh, often what you can do is you can take a single line and you can twist it all the way down to the other side. So you've got to twist about every three or four inches and you can pinch the material in between the the twisted line. This line wasn't uh, wasn't long enough to uh, double it back. So it's just a single line and some things here are kind of really flailing around. I could see this is flying off and you can make some really uh, quick little clothes pegs. I'll show you how here. Something like uh, Something like this would be good. And so I'm just going to take this and uh, clean it off a little bit here. Make enough for, uh, for a couple of them. I don't have anything to bat this with. Anyways, we'll just this. And then you just take take your knife right down the center here and you just start just tap that in. You just start to split it. Like that. You don't want it to go all the way. So it's just like that. And this will be enough that whenever you put it on the line, it will uh, it'll open up, but it'll want to come closed. And that'll, uh, that'll be a great little uh, clothes peg. So I'm just gonna make up another one here with this uh, other piece I have and just put them wherever we need them. So we'll just put one right here. So, and one here on the buff. There you go. Those guys won't go anywhere. I think everything else there is looking fairly stable. Tonight we are doing lemon pasta with uh, shrimp. That is the lemon and shrimp pasta. Oh wow, it's been waiting a long time to have that. Dinner is served. Well, we're getting ready for bed here. It's uh, later than I wanted it to be. It's uh, a little past 10 now. Um, we've been pretty much going steady since we uh, hit camp. 
got the uh, the tarp set up here and that's just covering a little bit of the front of the tent here so that way if it rains it'll give us a little extra shelter with the uh, items out front I've got my uh, the life jackets I've got them strung through the uh, the paddles give them a little extra weight um, actually let's take this rock here put it on top just in case we get a lot of wind we don't want anything blowing away my shoes I did not get them dry I didn't have enough of a fire or I didn't really have time I didn't really sit around the fire this evening I was just busy getting dinner ready and then uh, um, putting up the tarp and doing the tent and pumping water and hanging the bear bag. I also put up a line here and this goes under the tarp. This is the uh, side rope and I just ran that up to the other side here and I'm hoping I'll be able to get my socks and the uh, towel a little drier for tomorrow but you don't really get much drying power at night so I think I'm probably going to be stuck with wet stuff but oh well within about half an hour uh, being out there my feet are usually wet anyway, so it's just kind of mentally nice to be able to get into some dry shoes in the morning Well, we're just going to bed here And I just closed my eyes I was listening to this the water and the thunder I was Just thinking what a marvelous way to go to sleep The thunder has been rolling for most of the day. Stop for a couple of hours whenever I hit my sight, so I was fortunate that I didn't get any more rain, but I think there's more on the way. Maddie here is cooked. She is so done. She's used to couch surfing during the day, so this is a little different for her. Anyways, just enjoying the thunder and the, the sound of the water. I don't want to go to sleep. Well, I just got up uh, about half an hour ago, actually getting things put away, and it was a nice sunny day. It was great. And now, it's starting to bloody rain again, and clouds are rolling in. Look at this. Oh, man. I really, uh, really don't want to do another day like yesterday. Oh yeah, here it comes. Oh yeah, boy. Anyways, I've got my, uh, I've got my tarp set up. So, that's good. It's a little high for any kind of real big storm. Maybe I'll lower it, but anyways, we'll see what we can get. I mean, either way, we'll hit the water as long as there's no lightning, same as yesterday. And, uh, uh, I think the wind's going to be going with us, but not sure about that. We got a little, a little smudge on the lens here. I've had the wind at my back for a good part of this paddle. Not too bad at all. Nice and calm in here. That's what I like about the uh, rivers. But my portage should be just right around the corner here. I'm going to start off with two short ones. Just a 75 and a 40. And then uh, probably be going about 4 kilometers. Then I've got a 300. Then I've got to travel quite a distance. Probably about 10 kilometers. And then that's going to take me into uh, an 1840 portage and then into my campsite for the night. So it's a 23 kilometer day and I'm hoping to get to my site earlier than usual. 4.30 or 3 would be great. Oh yeah, I can see my portage there now. We have ourselves a lovely little portage here. Kind of like a stroll through the Shire. Maddie's quite content to be laying in the bottom of the boat here. Well, I wouldn't say she's content. I would say that she's not completely unhappy. <laughs> I don't think she'll respond. Maddie, 
No. She's mad at me. I was getting a little too comfortable here, perhaps. The wind here, because I'm right sitting against the, uh, the west shore and the wind's coming in from the west, so I'm not getting any, which is nice. A nice blue sky, but e not sure what is rolling in here. Well, I got to the portage that's going to take us into Big Trout, which is not even our final destination. It just started to rain, and the wind gusts are so big that it just blew the canoe off of my shoulders whenever I was bringing it up here. I was bringing it up here, and then it just pushed me right over here, and then just took the canoe right up and over. I stopped it from slamming onto the ground. I kind of managed to grab a hold of the thwart, but uh, man, I tell you, it is windy. Luckily, I think this wind is going in my direction. So I think I might be able to ride with this. You know, I think it was Bill Mason who was saying that doing the double carry wasn't so bad because he really enjoyed the walk back. I see what he means. It's, it's, it really is nice. Taking that walk back, having a little snack, kind of getting a bit of your strength back. And you really just kind of take in the sights a little more than you normally would. So, uh, I think whenever I go on my shorter trips and I do have a lighter pack, I'll probably continue to do the single carry. But whenever it becomes to the point that it's kind of draining the fun of the trip, I don't think I'd hesitate as much to do that, uh, that double carry. Alright, we're on Big Trout now. Look at these waters. Don't they look nice? Nice and calm. No problems. This is how deceiving it is. Because I am betting anything that once we get out there, that we will have white caps. I think I can kind of see some there. Hard to say, but either way, I mean, I know how hard the wind is blowing. And it's only because we're on the westward shore right now that we're not uh, witnessing it. But I do believe it's going to be going with us. So. My fingers are crossed. We have a ways to go yet. It's one o'clock right now. Um, I'm trying to make this point right here, but it's proving to be quite difficult to, uh, to stay on track. So this is what we were uh, coming in from. Pretty nasty out there. I uh, don't know if you can really see the size of these uh, waves here, but just really not a good idea to be out there right now. It never looks quite as bad on camera as it does in real life. But these guys here are really rolling. Just nasty. seems to like it. Uh, this is good. This will be good enough. This will keep us out of the wind. I could tie this one here and this one here as well. Um, I've got these guys here tagged straight into the uh, into the ground. Here and here. This one here, I kept it tied to the tree because um, I just wasn't getting the right angle on here. And it's fine. It keeps it low enough with the rock on there. And this gives a little bit of extra support. Um, like I said, I could tie down these ones here as well, and I may do that, but for now I'll just leave it like this. This is just a temporary shelter anyways. So I guess you're probably getting a lot of wind noise right now, but, uh, <laughs> Maddie's wondering who I'm talking to. Sorry, but... So, we're, uh, windbound now. Comfortable, ready for a storm and one can come. Uh, I've got the, my little bag here upside down, and i got the paddles holding it down. This way here I can my
committing to setting up the tent and everything here yet, because I still might be able to do it tonight. But for now, uh, I'm going to just see what the raw options are and uh, have a couple of courses of action that we can take as the day progresses and uh, how the weather goes. To be honest, I'm a little surprised this is actually holding up. There is an immense amount of pressure here. You can see here, I can see where it's starting to weaken. I don't know if that's actually a hole there or just if it's just very thin. But um, an immense amount of pressure on this tarp right now. Um, I think I may see about tying some of these down here. Some of the extras to uh, alleviate some of that pressure from the, uh, the main points. I'm just going through our, uh, our options now. Just having a little snack here. Whoa! Of uh, just some dried fruit I did at home. Got some uh, apples, plum, and uh, dried cherries, which are uh, quite good. Going through the map here. This is us right there. Okay. I'm right out exposed on the open. I had no choice. Nowhere else is up until here. I wasn't willing to uh, make that attempt. We're supposed to be here. So we're way off. I'm gonna have to make an adjustment. It's too bad I wanted to get to Black Labiel over here. It's very difficult to lake to uh, to get into, but I just don't think that's going to be encouraged for this trip. Went too aggressive with the uh, distances and didn't account for the, the bad weather. If we didn't have this bad weather, it'd be no problem. You know, it'd just be a nice paddle, portage is a little long, a little heavy with the pack, but doing the double carry, you know, I could manage, but not like this. Uh, it looks like this tree here is getting ready to go. It's been creaking and cracking, and you can see the right there. It's starting to split, and it is really swaying up top. You can just hear it cracking. Well, this is nice. This is a uh, standing dead birch. It's got lots of birch bark left on it, so it's going to be great for getting the uh, fire going. So we're just on the hunt for some firewood. I found this guy up here. Looks like people have already been picking away at him. Got lots of good wood left. I already took a few pieces off and uh, dumped them over here. We'll bring those back. We've already got a huge branch back at the camp. We still have this piece here. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Be nice too, because even if I don't need all of this, I can, I can leave some for the next people. All right, no problem. Uh, my pants intact after that. No holes. That's good. Now we have got tons of birch here, so we have lots and lots of birch bark. So we will have no problem getting this fire started. Yeah, there's something really satisfying about going from wind like this and then moving into nice quiet like this and having your shelter above you the wind kept from your back um, I've submitted to staying at this site now I'm not going any further not today anyways I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and set up the tent and pump some water and uh, I've already got all my firewood here more than enough firewood Got tons of birch bark here, a little crappy stuff, but that'll burn anyways. We're looking pretty good. It's 
dinner time and uh, I'm going to make refried bean wraps. So for that what we have is we've got some gravel and corn. Uh, this is uh, dried beef and corn. We've got uh, refried beans. This is also dried. We've got two uh, wraps here. Cheese stick for each one and some uh, burrito seasoning mix and some uh, taco sauce. Load these up. A little bit of taco sauce on there. Oh, these guys are loaded. Holy cow. Oh, no, I'm not just saying that. Sorry, I'm just picking out here. Incredible. Very good. Well, there's timing for you. We just got to bed. And Maddie's in her little, her little sleeping bag here. She was shivering like crazy earlier. I'm glad I have this thing. It really does keep her uh, keep her warm. She gets pretty cold at night. It gets pretty chilly. Um, we just just got to bed, and uh, here comes the rain. So good timing. But ah, I can't believe how much rain we're getting. Just non-stop. Anyways, um, yeah, so I think we may end up taking a day here tomorrow as well. And uh, kind of regrouping and figuring out a new path. Because the one I have chosen is now getting out of whack. Um, being uh, held back with the wind today has kind of thrown things off. So I have to figure out a bit of a new route and uh, take it from there. But anyways, uh, it's all good. I'm gonna get some sleep. And uh, look at this with fresh eyes tomorrow. So I gave it some thought last night and I've decided to uh, stay the course. I'm gonna uh, push for Merchant. It's pretty windy. We're gonna see what we can do. Uh, we've just got to have the length of this of this uh, of this lake. The wind is kind of going with us, not quite. We're going to see if we can work with that. It'll be a bit of a rough paddle. But once we get to our portage, then we're just going to pop in the merchant. How this is going to work is that we had the day off in La Vielle, so I'm going to skip that day off. So I'm going to be off of my route by one day for about two or three days. And then I'll be back on track whenever I don't take the, uh, whenever I don't take that day off. <laughs> Matty is ready to go into that boat. You ready, Goose? <laughs> Whoops. Hold on, Matty. I gotta push it in first. All right, we're in a bit of a calmer section here. A little ways to go. I'll be happy once we get to the shore there. Urgh, having a hard time keeping this straight with the with the one handed with the one handed stroke. God, this is crazy. I'm just sitting here keeping it straight. 4.5 or 5.0 kilometers an hour. Um, yeah, it's pretty funny actually. I've been going map and compass for the last few trips, and. Uh, I decided on this trip it may be a good idea to bring the, the GPS being such a long trip I didn't want to mess about, but I wasn't really going to use it, but it's kind of like junk food, I think. Whenever I have it in the house, I eat it. And whenever I got the GPS, I use it. And in this kind of weather anyways, you really don't want to mess around too much. Like, I really don't want to be doing a wrong turn here. It's one thing to say, oh, well, you just double back and see where you're at and make a little correction, but I don't want to double back in this. Well, I'm kneeling in the boat now. The waves are really uh, rolling in at this point. But I was uh, doing seven kilometers an hour just ruddering uh, back there. Yeah, really quite nice. Maddie's doing well here with the whole deal. I'm just trying to rudder here with my right. Um, we should be just about there. Got to be just through... Uh, through here off to the uh, 
off to the right at the end there, slight little bulge. You can see there, I think that's where I'm heading in. Anyways, just want to make sure I don't get too shallow here. It's really what makes the waves break as well. Oh, it looks like I'm heading in for some calm, which will be nice. So I'll have some wind and the calm. Perfect combination. And then we'll uh, be into Merchant. And we're going to be coming in, I think, on the west shore, which is good because wind is coming in from the west. So that should, uh, that should put us in a good position. This is a nice little spot in here. This is just coming into the uh, portage for Merchant Lake. I've just been doing some few easy strokes, some ruddering, and it's been just taking me right along. Uh, and here we go, coming up to our portage. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I'd gone too far. And then I had to go over a beaver dam. And it's always a pain whenever you have to go through like a little bit of hardship and you're not even sure if you're going the right way. But anyways, here we are. So this will take us into Merchant and um, I think that's where we'll be staying for the night. This is a uh, 1.8. On the trail again. Heading into Merchant Lake from Big Trout. And because I'm a glutton for punishment, I'm doing the uh, single carry. I'll see how it goes. I mean, worst case scenario, I just drop one of the items and then continue on, which I just may end up doing. I'm just kind of testing it to see how I'm at. Um, my backpack is noticeably lighter now. I've been going through a few meals and uh, I also dumped a lot of my bannock. I gotta learn. I don't know what it is. Me and bannock, I guess I just don't want to give it up, but I always pack bannock for a day every day and lately I don't have bannock every day but I still seem to pack it and that is heavy stuff so whenever you're getting into nine days that really adds up so I burnt a lot of that so I left it where I've only got about three or so I've got one grilled cheese bannock meal on the uh, on the menu and then I've got two other ones just for whatever. Um, and because of dumping all of that, I also dumped some of the ghee because much of the ghee I had was for, uh, was for the bannock, for a spread and for cooking it. So that really helped a lot as well. So we'll see how we're doing already. Though my legs are getting a little tired, but that's nothing new for a portage. We'll see how we do. It's just a 1.8. It's an awful long way to have to do it. Um, I have to walk it three times. So far, so good. Oh, what a lovely little portage. Here we go. A little bridge and everything. Look at us. How do you like it, Goose? Not too shabby, eh? Huh. Damn, my, uh, my pack has been giving me problems here. My broken thing here just came undone. I'm just trying to tie it here. Hopefully that'll hold a little longer. Well, I haven't stopped yet. I'm really hoping we're at the end soon. I don't know if I'll be doing this again. I am hot, like really hot. I'm uh, gonna need more water. I am tired and I'm on the verge of miserable. So, uh, I think I'll do the uh, double carry for the next little bit anyways. We'll see, unless maybe for really short ones. But I'm just counting on us being almost at the end. This may be the, the extended version of 1.8. Friend Smiley seem to get portages that are that, the extended versions. We are, uh, we are there. Hallelujah. Oh yeah. Merchant Lake. Thank you. Whew. Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Whenever you think you might want to have a swim, you're getting pretty hot, getting pretty tired, just do it. Because uh, I just went in for a swim here and I feel like a million bucks. 
it's amazing because I was just feeling absolutely downtrodden, terrible, tired, beyond hot, and uh, now I'm good to go. So, uh, yeah, always nice to get in there for a swim. It's just whenever you're pressed for time, you often think you just you just don't have time to do it. But um, I think in the end, it really helps. Although I need to take my advice more often because often I don't. Anyways, uh, Maddie also went in there. She kind of coaxed me to go in. She was the first one in the water. I followed her along. All right. Well, I think we're gonna stay here. We gotta figure out where we're going to uh, where we're gonna be heading to. Doesn't look too bad right here. Well, here I mean, it looks beautiful. Um, but I can see white caps over at the distant uh, over at the distant shore there. I don't know if you'll be able to make them out, but. You can see white caps there. It doesn't look too bad, though. Either way, I think it's going our direction, so I'm not going to complain. Slight change of plans. We are in Merchant. Boy, that was quite a uh, that was quite a fight to get uh, to get through Merchant. I was just being pushed sideways the whole time, and the big gusts are what really grab you. Um, you can see on this tree here, there used to be a sign there and it was taken off. That makes it a bit of a pain to find this portage. It's fine if you're in an area that doesn't have the portage signs, but if you're counting on them being there, um, it's a pain when they don't. Somebody did put a little piece on this rock here to kind of indicate that this is the portage. But uh, anyways, here we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to make up some time. Maddie wants to get it so bad. Um, we're going to try to make up some time for tomorrow since I've been finding the days to be long and hard and I'm going to pop into Happy Isle uh, Lake which is going to uh, shorten tomorrow a little bit uh, because I'm already behind one day so I'm not scheduled to be on any lake that I should be on anyways. I should have been on Merchant tonight or sorry last night. Uh, anyways so we're going to pop through and the wind should be going with me, so I'm going to try to take advantage of that while I can. So we're going to pop out here and do this. This is a little 360. Well, I've got my longest, longest portage of the trip tomorrow, which is a 3.8 kilometer, preceded by a 1.2. So, and then I've got some marsh to uh, go through. The thing with the marsh is that you never... Uh, you never know really how long it's going to take because it's so windy. You'll be going like, you're, you're supposed to be going, as a crow flies, you're supposed to go like north. And you may find yourself at some points heading south because it's just so twisting. And that really um, adds to the distance, which can be quite unexpected. So um, I want to accommodate for that. And I really want to keep these days as manageable as possible. I kind of messed up. I made them a little bit long. And not having so much long, just so much in them. A lot of marsh travel, a lot of, a lot of portages. And it just makes the whole thing that much more, uh, that much more difficult. So anyways, really not seeing much in the way of uh, moose tracks. Usually you see moose tracks all over in the mud here and whatnot, but it's the beginning of the rut, which is the moose mating season, so I'm guessing they're uh, deeper into the woods right now. As far as stuff that I have on me, what I keep is the, uh, I keep a handkerchief here tied to my belt. I use that, I bring about uh, two or three of them and just rotate them and then uh, wash them. Keep my knife here. I've got hip pack, which I keep here. This has some food in it, emergency supplies, um, things I use often and want to have on me because whenever you're canoeing, you don't have the stuff available to you. Like whenever you're backpacking, you can just take off your backpack and get whatever you need. Whenever you're canoeing, especially solo, your pack's in the front and you can't get to it. So you need to keep stuff that you're going to want to use on you. And also whenever you're doing a double carry, you don't have your pack on you at all. So I keep this on me. And then this is for the camera, which I am holding right now, which is a uh, Canon Vixia, what the hell is here? It's a Canon Vixia HF R100. 
and I keep that in here. I also have some snacks in here as well. If I have ever been out on windier days, I don't remember when. Just constant wind everywhere. It's just like each day is just brutally windy. And often you'll get some relief on some lakes and haven't had too much. Although big trout I got off easy and maybe I'll get off easy here. Merchant was a bitch. Well, another fine, uh, another fine lake of paddling. I just got soaked here on my side. Just from being splashed from coming in here, I had to run along the shore. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to smash me. Looks like there's probably a storm coming here. So we're gonna get ready for that. And boy, I tell you, the waves are really, uh, really coming in here. All right, we're gonna see if we can get something set up here. Can set up the tarp? Probably right there. All right, we're all set up again. Ready for uh, another storm. So I've got one of these portable sinks here. <laughs> this is not Mandy's water dish. She's just uh, having a little drink. But uh, these things are really good because they do make a, it's better for, it's for doing the dishes. You can use the biodegradable soap in here and then dump it um, far away from your site. Uh, the biodeg biodegradable soap is not biodegradable if you use it just right in the lake. It's only biodegradable if it's like being filtered through the, the earth. And it's also very handy for days whenever you've got water coming in like this. And you really just can't get down there. I just went down on that little bit right here to scoop up that water and I just got uh, splashed all over on my side and so you really wouldn't be able to pump there and uh, you wouldn't be able to just sit out there in the boat so those are really handy for uh, for pumping water and for doing the dishes having said that this is the granite gear um, sink and I don't like it at all um, the problem is is that it doesn't really hold its structure very well and so whenever if an end starts going here, and I had this happen to me yesterday, if this end starts falling in, as soon as it kind of dips in there, then the whole thing goes. And so I was sitting there working away, and then all of a sudden, splash all over my foot, this thing went down. So anyways, um, I will be looking for a different one, but at least it'll do in a pinch right now. There you go, so now I'm all set. So I can just go ahead and uh, pump away here and fill up my, uh, my water bottle with this. All right, well, we got this whole bunch of firewood here. These are all uh, branches from a downed tree. The only thing right now is that you're constantly rushing to get everything out, uh, trying to get everything done, get everything done before it rains because it's this constant, constant threat of a great big storm coming. So anyways, we're all set for it. All those branches that we have have translated into uh, this pile of wood here, which will be plenty for tonight. And we got tons of starter here. So we are all set. I can find a little bit of birch bark. Ah, oh, there we are. Birch bark right over here. So I'll just grab a little bit of that, and we'll be all set for uh, for a fire. Then that's it. All we need to do is uh, make up dinner, and we're done. What time do we have here? Let's see. It is 5:15. Hoorah! Lots of time. I got tired of sitting in the wind, so I did the tarp up to block the wind again. Um, I got the canoe here as well propped up to uh, block a little bit from that side. I've got the back pegged down. I just made some uh, pegs out of some sticks. And I've tied up the sides here and corner up here, other corner to that tree. And this is why I bring extra rope because this one here is going all the way up to that tree way over there. And uh, so that works great. And uh, it could just pour right now and that would be uh, no problem. So that's our little, uh, our little wind shelter. So we can kind of take refuge there while 
things are huffing and puffing out here. And Maddie is taking her usual refuge at the back of the uh, at the back of the wind block. Very satisfying being out of the wind. I just put together the uh, daily snacks and uh, this is basically my lunch and what I've got for this trip uh, for each day I have uh, some gorp about uh, three ounces of gorp I've got instead of bringing fruit sticks which I uh, often do and this time I brought uh, some dried fruit that I dried myself I've got uh, dried apple cherries and uh, plums so just uh, a little bit of that this is this works out to uh, 1.75 ounces of uh, M&Ms, just a nice size container for it. I'm bringing uh, real cheese this time. I've got little two ounce blocks of old cheddar sealed up. I've got one of these per day, and this is a really nice treat. Very flavorful and uh, very tasty. I've switched from granola bars to Cliff bars. These are great. They don't break, they hold together really well. They've got a lot of good stuff in them that keeps you going. And uh, they are tasty. The, the crunchy peanut butter, can't say enough about that. And meat sticks. This is the usual uh, pepperoni sticks that I bring. These are the ones where you buy them in the store and they'll have, uh, they'll say right on it that they don't require refrigeration. Those are the ones that you'll want. They're a little firmer than most. Um, really enjoy these on the uh, on the trail. You ready for fed? <laughs> oh, this just never gets old, eh? Oh, you've been waiting so long. All right. Wow, good to say. Come on. Over. No. <laughs> there you go. Good girl. All right. And off to sleep. <laughs> I'm all uh, I'm all ready to go here. And we have under here, we have a uh, oh, it's a goose. <laughs> oh, hi goose. Hold on. Hold on. Do you hear that? Nothing. There's no water crashing on shore. Oh. Well, we have a nice crisp morning here. It's pretty chilly out. It's kind of nice, actually. A little bit of fog rising off the water. Well, we have a change today. Don't know if you notice anything different here, but right here is where I was putting my tent. My tent can now fit back inside the pack, so the pack's quite tall again. But um, my food has gone down enough that I can get my tent. 
back inside, which is where I like it. Keep it nice and safe in there. Uh, I'm going to do a quick repair here. Uh, this is one of the uh, buckles that broke right here. The same problem I had with my uh, with my main buckle. Now they can still clip, as you can see, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the less important side buckles here and swap that for this one here. For the front, I've, I've been able to take these straps here that are left on each side and tie them after I buckle it, and that seems to be doing all right. But if worse comes to worse, I'll I may look at an alternative for. Uh, for this but so far it's been all right so I'm gonna leave that for now but uh, we're just about ready to head out here it's about uh, 7 45 right now wanted to get an earlier start on today got a lot of a lot of walking to do on that one 3.8 portage if I do a double carry we're looking at uh, a lot of clicks like 12 kilometers of walking so yeah lovely weather wow i could really go for this all day this would be just wonderful anyways we're coming into the first portage here uh this is 1.2 i'm gonna do a double carry on this i've never done a double carry for that long and i just want to get an idea of just how long that will take which will give me a better idea for 3.8 and i really want to just keep my energy up i don't want to kill myself here and we've got time it's like about 8:20 right now so we should be able to knock this off. There's not too much paddling in today. There is some marsh paddle in that. You just really never know how long it is because it can be so windy. But either way, I'm figuring, let's see how this turns out. We should be at our campsite by about, you know, three years sooner. That would be great. Done quite a bit of uphill on this. Um, it's interesting because all I can do is think about if I had my boat and the pack, how it would be. I would be killing me. Well, speaking of uphill, we got down here and then straight up here. And I don't really worry about that now, which is kind of nice, but you just pay for it in time. So, I mean, with, as with anything, you've got to pay one way or another. So, if you take the boat in the pack, you pay with sweat and pain. <laughs> and if you, uh, but you gain on time and you just take the pack separately and then the boat then you pay in time but you don't you don't uh, take up so much energy and so much water and all of that so right now we do have some time and this is going pretty well my pack was riding pretty heavy on my shoulders so I just lifted it up here tightened it up some more um, you really don't want to be feeling too much of your straps and your shoulders they just want to be kind of keeping it balanced but that's not where you want to be taking all the weight you want to be taking your weight or you want to be taking the weight of the uh, pack on your hips that's where mine is right now so this is really quite comfortable now I'm on day what, four no five now it's Wednesday I think it's Wednesday, so easy to lose track of the days. Um, I'm really settling in now. Uh, this is what I've always felt too, is that well, whenever I went on four or five day trips, I always felt like I was just settling in and then I had to go home. So now I'm really settling in and I got, I've got until Sunday. And I mean, this really is starting to feel like home now. It's tough though. Whenever you have a family, that's the hardest part got two kids and my wife and I miss them terribly but you just keep busy and and uh, you just look forward to seeing them and appreciate them all the more when you get home boy someone's been busy here Wow this is the first time I've seen a dock this far out. Like an out and out dock. Look at this. What the hell? Wow. Beautiful conditions. 
We must be able to have motor boats here. What the hell? Interesting. What lake is this? We are now heading back on the 1.2. So, ooh, this is quite wonderful. So light. I really need to uh, get to camp early today so I can do a wash. I mean, I stink. Well, my clothes stink. I had a, a swim yesterday and kind of cleaned up a bit, but wow. I was checking my shirts to see which one was less rank this morning and I actually gagged. So that's not a good sign. And I often wonder how many animals are watching you or have seen you on your trip. I mean, I haven't seen any. They're obviously far more stealthy than I am. I'd be curious to know that number. Probably quite a few. So we're back at the boat and it was another 25 minutes. So about 25 minutes for a 1.2. Let's see if we can get the actual number here. And it's, it is... ...2180. Fuck, are you kidding me? Oh, you're kidding me. I just took the wrong portage. I knew this one seemed so long. A 1280 is like, you gotta be kidding me. This is in the Opiongo. This is a 21, 2180. Oh, boy. Oh, try, 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 try. You have got to be kidding me. Ay, 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 ay. All right. Well, I got to go back in my pack. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm going back to get my pack now. I'm going back for my second walk. This is crazy. Okay, so that's 25 minutes for 2.1. So that's not so bad. And it was a little disheartening that I was thinking that that was 1.2K because that seemed a whole lot longer than that. So now that we get that sorted out, it really should have clued me in whenever I saw the dock with ties for a motorboat. I just could not figure out why on earth there would be a dock. Well, now all the pieces are falling into place, aren't they? <sighs> Out of all days to have the longest portage of my life, it's on today when I walk about an extra 8.5K. All right, here we are. Happy Isle, oh, happy, happy Isle. To Red Rock. This is our uh, 1330, actually. I see the error in my ways now. My campsite is embarrassingly close to this portage. I didn't check the map this morning. I just knew that it wasn't too far down the down the the shore here. So I was just trucking along, and then over here I could see a portage sign. It's like, oh, bingo, and off I went. But this is out, this is behind a little bit of a pier. So what I did is I just skimmed down here and then I would have had to look back to see this sign and I missed it. So anyways, that little misstep cost me uh, about two hours and uh, two hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> so anyways, uh, we're gonna get started with our day starting now. I'm figuring this portage here will take about an hour. The 3.8 I'm figuring will take about three hours. And I figure we got about two hours of paddling. So we're we're looking at about six hours to go. Hoping to get a little bit of time in today to do some chores and clean up and gear repair. I should still be able to get that in. We'll see how we do. Anyways, at least I'm not gonna be getting into camp like at eight or nine or something. I always love these little babbling brooks here going through the uh, going through the middle of the trail. Oh red rock lake. I am, whoa, how I am glad to see you. Oh nice and calm in here too, that's great. Wasn't so calm in Happy Isle. Okay. 
back for the boat. <laughs> Maddie's getting a lot of walking in here. <laughs> Hi, Goose. Okay, let's go. And my hips are getting pretty sore. I mean, the boat's about 50 pounds all together with everything in it. My pack's probably about 55 pounds. And I've walked about 12 kilometers so far. And I've got another, geez, I've got about another 12, 13 kilometers to go. I've got the 3.8, almost four kilometer portage, which I'll do a double carry for. And then the rest of this one, we got a long ways to go. And that's not even counting the, the river travel. Good thing is we've got nice weather today and the bugs are not existent, which is really, I mean, I kind of forget about that every once in a while, but I mean, I had two trips earlier this year. I mean, one was prime bug season and I was in a swamp, so I really can't really expect anything else, but I mean, the, the, the flies were unbelievable. I've never seen worse. And I went earlier and uh, I went with a friend of mine and black flies were crazy. They were so bad. He had so much blood on his shirt from black flies that he ended up just burning his shirt because it was just a mess. So with all of the difficulties I'm going through right now, hey, there's no bugs. Wow, I'm on the water again. I almost forgot I was on a canoe trip. All that hiking, <laughs> like over 13 kilometers so far just today and it's 12 o'clock um so that 1330 meter portage took exactly one hour doing a double carry so there's a number you can you can work with for uh, determining how long portages will take that wasn't going at too brisk of a pace it's pretty comfortable i was already kind of getting worn out from my previous little expedition Really nice out here. Holy cow, it's hard to believe it was starting to kick up in Happy Isle. Really nice here. Well, we've made it to our uh, the three kilometer portage. I was thinking it was a 3.8, but it's a 3,085, so that's a bit of a treat. And because we're running a little short on time here, shorter than I would like, it's 12.50, and I still got a little bit of a paddle after uh, after this portage and some marsh in there as well which can really be windy so it's kind of hard to tell how long that's going to be so uh, i think we're going to try or we're going to start with uh, a full carry taking everything and i'll see how that goes i'll either switch to a double carry along the way or i'll just take longer breaks or something like that but i really would like to make up a little time because i'd like to have a little more time once I uh, hit my site, so I can do some cleanup. Um, I really <laughs> need to wash these clothes. This is, this is this, I'm absolutely gross. Um, and uh, to do some uh, gear repairs as well, some repairs on my pack and uh, whatnot. So, um, and it's just nice to get a little bit of rest in for the day, especially after today. It's been a, a bit of a long one with the extra little trot in there um yeah it's funny it's this is a really quiet lake it seems much wilder than the rest i don't know what it is but it just uh it's awfully quiet and uh whenever i first got here at first it sounded like i was hearing like breaking branches and stuff and i was a little bit on edge um i thought it might be a, a moose or something like that coming to check me out normally that wouldn't concern me but uh it is uh riding season now so um, I like to keep my radar up with that sort of thing. But it just kind of made me realize how it's just a matter of getting comfortable with the sounds that are around you. Once you realize what it is, and it was the water kind of slapping underneath this log, which is making a very loud uh, slapping sound, kind of sound like something breaking. Once you know what it is, then you're fine. And I think that's why whenever people start with the outdoor uh, tripping and whatnot, they're on edge a lot because there, there's a lot of sounds to get used to. Once you've been doing it for a while, you kind of know what's what and it doesn't really bother you anymore. Um, and also, 
with a lot of it, um, except for the rut, um, if you do hear something uh, in the woods, um, what are you going to do? I mean, you just wait and see if they're going to come out or not. Uh, I usually have my air horn. I really should try it and make sure it still works because I've had the damn thing for about four years and it's never, it's never been used. Um, it'll be like the moment of truth and it'll be like, Rah! and then I'll be it and I'll get eaten. Anyways, um, yeah, so I'm going to take a little rest here, have a little something to eat, um, maybe take like half an hour and get ready to do this, uh, this portage. I can tell I'm eating something here, man. He's looking awfully intent. <clears throat> and I am. I'm having my cheese. This is great. I'm bringing a real block of cheese. And one of these a day is fantastic. Um, this is uh, old cheddar. Taste sensation. A little party in my mouth. Maddie always gets a little bit of this. <laughs> All right, here you go, Maddie. This is a treat that she gets at camp, but not at home. She seems to understand that this isn't going to happen at home. Well, for the most part. Here you go, Goose. Oh, yeah. Never misses. Did you even taste the tip? No, I don't have any more. <laughs> All right, here we go on our full carry on the three... 3k, 3,085 meter. Not sure how much I'll be able to do with a full carry. I wouldn't be surprised if I switch up after 1k, but we'll see how we do. And the only reason why I'm also considering it for this is because uh, this is the last portage of the day. If I had like another 1.2 or whatever, like I wouldn't want to destroy myself and then have more portages to do. And you can tell whenever you're in the not so used areas, definitely a little uh, a little more crowded in here than your other portages I've been on. Guess the three Ks aren't aren't that popular. So again, gotta really mind your step, even right down to the way I grab a pot handle or something like that. You just want to make sure you're not going to be spilling boiling water on yourself or anything. Like, I mean, you always want to be sure of that, but you, I mean, you really need to be certain. There's no messing around. You really injure yourself back here. You have a long ways to go to get out and you're on your own. You know, there's a chance you could always bump into somebody, but that's nothing you can count on. Well, I've been walking Ooh, for about uh, 15 minutes. Not doing too bad. We'll be able to do it, I think. I don't think I'll have to resort to a double carry at any point here. Um, just the usual. I mean, hot and sweaty. I uh, just filled up my water. I just filled it straight from the lake before I uh, hit the beginning of this portage. I knew I'd need more, so I drank about... Uh, half a liter a little less than half a liter and then filled up my bottle drank a little more so i'm fairly hydrated but i'm gonna probably need the rest of this bottle before i'm done this portage anyways we're just going to take a little breather and then uh, proceed a lot of uphill as well primarily uphill i don't think i've had any downhill a um, little bit down here right just stopped on the Oh yeah, no, it's going back up again. Anyways, nothing super steep, but these just gradual inclines. Hey, what's this? It's a river down there. Why am I not in the river down there? I see water. Huh. Uh, I should be at about the 2K mark right now. Uh, it's been another 15 minutes since my stops. It's about 15 minutes per K. Um, my back is killing me. I must be about two inches shorter now. Well, that's the second stop. 
We're just past, uh, <laughs> how are we doing, Goose? Oh, yeah, this is not a canoe trip anymore. Um, we're at the second stop. We were past two kilometers right now, or we must be on past the second 15 minute mark. Um, yeah, so we're almost there, about 10 minutes to go. It's funny though, it sounds like nothing. 10 minutes, no problem. I finally ever checked my watch. It was like one or two, maybe three minutes would pass, and I think it must have been 10 or something. Again, this is not the fun way to portage, that's for sure. This is the fast way to portage. If I had not messed up at the beginning of the day, I'd be doing this as a double carry, and this would be a real pleasure, and I'd be telling you about the grasshoppers and the butterflies. <laughs> kind of funny, actually. When the canoe was on the ground, Maddie was desperately trying to get into it. I think she's at the point now where I think she just wants to be chauffeured around. And she knows that whenever she's in the boat, that's exactly what happens. <laughs> oh, and there it is. There it is. Don't tease me now. Oh, yeah. There's our put in. Always really nice when they hit areas like this. Just little, little highways. Nice and calm, which is a beautiful change. Nice as well whenever you're, you're all set where you know that the next time you hit land, it's going to be your campsite. There are no more portages in my future for today. If anyone's ever wondering how I'm paddling whenever I'm talking like this, it's just the old one-handed, one-handed paddle, like so. Just enough to keep me straight. Well, this is a nice switch. As you can see from the way the weeds are bending here, I am now, uh, I am now going with the current. Beautiful. Not a lot of these cliffs like this. Very nice. Well, this is this is really tough. Um, I am completely, totally spent, and um, is all the sights are taken, from what I can see. And I don't have one scheduled on here, so I really don't belong here because I was windbound. I think that's kind of what screwed a lot of things up here. We are here, and uh, there's not much going on here at all. At least portages are shorter. There's a 240, a 155, a 1220, and a little well, a long stretch here, and then there's a campsite, and then there's a long stretch. 385, 170, 205, and a 110. And then I can't see what lake this is here, but there's a campsite here, and then the rest is kind of cut off. So I think that may be lake going in. I think that going from Lake Crow into Lac La Vielle is 23 kilometers. That's what we're getting into. And it's 4 o'clock. We can camp just somewhere without making a fire if we really need to. Anyways, we'll just do what we can. We'll push ahead and see how we do. I've done portaging in the dark before. It is memorable. Well, running late or not, this really is a, a nice area to paddle. The good news is, is that we push really hard tonight, then tomorrow we have the day off. Because I was supposed to be staying on Lac Laviel tonight. And, I mean, the other good news is that no bugs. We're going with the current. We got the wind at our back. And this is gorgeous. Okay, here we go. Our first portage. This is a short one. I can't remember what it is, like 200 or something like that. It's around the dam. Um, we're all reloaded, I pumped some water. I just drank a whole liter. Um, oh, I think has got the runs. You got the trots there, Goose? Um, yeah, I just pumped two liters. I drank one liter and I uh, have another liter ready to go with me. Oh, this is nice. Look at this. Oh, I love river travel. 
it is a nice way to go. What do you think, Goose? I was actually doing all right today. I managed to keep my feet pretty much dry for most of the day, but I am now stuck right here. I can't go any further. So I'm gonna have to just uh, get out and walk. So that is what we'll do. You stay there, Goose. You stay there. Good girl. The thing I'm enjoying about this paddle is that it's uh, it's a little technical, uh, kind of up in the middle of the boat, sitting up on my uh, on my knees, and uh, there's a lot of rocks and water you gotta watch out for, some broken beaver dams that you gotta go through, that sort of thing. So it kind of keeps your mind off of it keeps your mind occupied, and keeps your mind off of your arms being really sore, you just being generally tired and hungry. Because um, I really don't want to stop and eat and all of that. I have had the rest of my snacks because um, I want to make the most that I can of this. Uh, of the light here. Well, we're on the 1220 right now. Um, this is looking doable. I'm actually feeling quite energized. I don't know why, but uh, I'm just motoring along here doing a full carry. I don't think I'll have any problem finishing this one. Things are shaping up all right. As long as we get to a site close to around Lac La Vielle, then uh, I think Crow Bay is right before Lac La Vielle and it's got sights on it. Even if we end up there, that'd be good. Anyways, we'll see how that works out. Uh, we're into the stuff you see in the magazines now. Really beautiful. I think we're going to be all right for time too. I mean, it'll be late once we get there, but this is fully worth it. I haven't seen any wildlife really at all. I've seen squirrels and toads. I've seen a lot of toads. It's been toad season or something. Yeah, this has got to be my favorite thing to paddle. One thing, whenever you're coming around corners like this, you want to take a bit of a wide berth. Because if there is a movement right there, you don't want to startle them. We have a beaver dam up ahead here. I think it's broken on the side. So it is. Should be all right here. about getting my feet wet. They're already, they're already soaked. It's kind of nice actually. Once you get them wet, finally, then you're like, oh, who cares? And then things become a lot easier whenever you're loading up the boat with your pack. You don't have to worry about trying to keep your feet dry. It's this kind of quest whenever you're first starting the day, or for me anyways. But once you get them wet, then uh, not the feel anymore water, drop your pack in, walk in the water, pull your pack out. Whoa, what do we have here? Well, I'm on the second of the four portages that are going to take me. This is a little 170. I've been just paddling like mad. It's about quarter to eight now. Going to be losing sun soon. Well, we're already starting to lose sun, but it's going to go away soon. Got two more portages to do. And then we'll be in 
Crow Bay, which is attached to, without a portage, Lac La Vielle. All right, we're on the third portage. Losing light here. We got one more to go. Should be right around this corner. The only thing I don't want is to have to try to find a site in the dark. All right, I'm gonna get my headlamp out just so that way I have it handy. I have a feeling I'll end up needing that. Nice. Oh, seeing some red on the trees over there. Must be a nice sunset. There's that sunset. Nice. Well, last portage of the day. I think I've heard that one before. That was about four hours ago. Whoa. Whoa. Almost there. Wow, it is gonna be sweet to get to my site. Even though it's gonna be dark, I'm gonna really wanna take a swim because I am hot. Wow. Oh yeah. It's opening up quite a bit. Oh man. More twist more twisting river. Oh boy, I don't know if I can take more twisting river. My well, light is fading, fading fast. The moon is out here. I've still got a little ways to go. Gosh, I don't know how far it is, maybe five clicks, something like that. Anyway, it's still really nice, and evening paddles are great. I don't think I'm going to have any problems with the route if I uh, lose light. Got a little beaver village here. We have one, two, three little beaver dams. <laughs> Oh, there they go. Now we got a couple of beaver. Well, we got the cricket quartet out right now. And uh, it's 8.20, the sun is gone. It's gonna start getting dark now. Um, I just realized I have been going non-stop for 12 hours, 8.20 to 8.20. The longest break I took was before the 3K portage, which was 10 minutes. So this has been a, been a long day. Got to see a lot of really nice sights though. It's been a lot of beautiful, beautiful scenes. But uh, my gas tank is empty, so I'm ready to hit the site. And we'll get ourselves set up and then enjoy a nice relaxing day tomorrow. There's a little outcrop here. I think there's a campsite on the other side. I hope it's there. We got ourselves a campsite. All right. For a second there, I thought the boat was gone. I was going to say that would be kind of funny. Oh my God, I can barely, <laughs> oh, I can barely walk. My knees are, <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. All right, get the pack out, pull the boat up and uh, make something to eat. <sighs> nice. Well, this is the first time I feel like I've been able to take a breath today. Got the fire going. I've got the tent up. Sleeping bag is set up. So here's my little setup here. We've got Maddie's life jacket, my life jacket. We've got some uh, water boiling for some tom yum soup. It's like a ramen noodle. My shoes have done some drying. Maddie's having a little snooze here. So we're just kind of snugged in right now. So uh, I'm just drying up my feet a little bit here. Oh, it's so nice to get a fire going. I was thinking I might not be able to, and it's kind of demoralizing. But once you get it going, oh... The world is right again. Maddie here doesn't know what to think. Oh, there's my first mosquito I think I've seen. All right, well, I'm gonna get my dry shoes on and then we'll uh, I'll get Maddie fed and get the tent up and 
have a little something to eat. And tomorrow I am sleeping in. <laughs> How are we doing there, Goose? Oh, what I put you through, eh? Here's my tent setup I've got uh, going on here. I have uh, my sleeping bag. I've got my thermorest. On my thermorest, I have uh, little blobs of um, silicon patch material here, or shoe goo, or whatever you want to use here. But just basically little sticky kind of material. I'm having a hard time focusing here. There we go little sticky kind of material here and I just glob that all over um, down the uh, down the pad and that helps to keep the sleeping bag from sliding all over the place on it um, and I do that on the top and on the bottom and it keeps the pad from sliding around um, I've got my sleeping bag I have two pillows here two stuffed pillows actually this one here is my the pillow for my head. This one here, I just put my uh, my rain gear in it, and uh, and the sweater. And this I use to. This is great because you're not always going to have a perfectly level uh, ground to put your tent on, and so often you're kind of going one way or the other throughout the night. You're kind of sliding, but this is great because you just put it on the side that you're going towards, and it keeps you. From rolling in that direction so you just kind of hug that on to that side of your body and uh, it keeps you from rolling all over the place that works really well uh, that's actually really helped my sleep uh, the other one is just a larger stuffed pillow here with all of my clothes in it I've got my big uh, heavy sweater on the top of it and then everything else um, inside and that works great for a uh, for my main pillow. I've got reading material here. Um, I just brought a magazine. I don't actually read that much. By the time I come to bed, I'm usually pretty tired. I read a couple of paragraphs, some paragraphs, and I am out. So, um, Backpacker magazine is always a good one. Um, and it's relatively light, and it fits well in the map case. I usually bring the map case in as well, just to kind of go over my next day and that sort of thing. I keep my camera. This is my other camera. Um, the camera which I am actually using right now is this one right here. This is the Canon Fixia HFR100. And this thing has been really great. It's high def. This is the camera that I did all of my other videos with. Well, this one or the previous versions of it. I've been upgrading as, a, as it uh, came out with new versions. I've got my headlamp. My, which is the uh, uh, Black Diamond Spot. Best headlamp out there right now, hands down in my opinion. I've tried a bunch of them that are currently available. I've got my buff, this here I would use as a uh, as a hat at night if it gets uh, pretty chilly. I have my air horn, just in case I have any animals that are, can't be persuaded to leave. I've got my knife, the GPS, this has an alarm on it which I use. This is just the case for my camera that I'm currently holding. This is my pack which has all my general supplies in it. Um, but it has a uh, my watch on it. That's the main thing I use it for. But in here, it's just my uh, nothing I'd actually use in the tent. Really, I usually just keep this with me at all times. It just has general supplies that I use often. I've got my water bottle here. Up here, I have my socks are drying. These are all the bags and stuff for everything that's in the tent, like my thermal rest, whatnot. 
And last but not least, we have Maddie's sleeping bag right here. And this has been really good for this trip, especially. It's been quite cool at night, and I'd wake up and Maddie would just be shivering. And I open, all I have to do is open this up, and she just crawls right in and uh, gives her a nice sleep as well. I don't like to think that she's freezing her butt off while I'm uh, toasty warm in my sleeping bag. So anyways, that's the, uh, that's the general setup. Well, it was a fine sight, and it saved my butt last night. But we're going to take our leave today, and I'm going to position ourselves on Lake La or on uh, Lac La Vielle to uh, help us for tomorrow. So this way, if there is any wind, I won't have to deal with it because we're going to be right at the mouth of the river that we're going to be starting in, and I generally don't have to deal with wind there. And it's going to be a relatively long day, anyways. It's about 20 kilometers, so I don't want to make it any longer with the distance from here to the uh, to the start. So we just packed up. I haven't had breakfast or anything yet. I'm going to have that once we get there. It should take about an hour, hour and a half. It's about uh, nine o'clock right now. Well, this has been the uh, the goal of the trip, and there it is. This is Lac Lavaille. Bit of a difficult lake to get into. So we're just going to posture for tomorrow's uh, for tomorrow's start point. And uh, there is an island which is right there. And we're either going to stay on that or uh, just behind it. And just behind that is uh, the entrance into the river, which is uh, Crow River. And that's where we're going to be starting tomorrow. And we've got 16 portages. Well, I'm really, I'm really not able to catch too much of a break on this trip with the weather. It looked like it was going to be all right. And, uh, really starting to kick up pretty quickly here. Luckily, my sight is right there. I'm going to take this island sight, and I will hunker down. But boy, I tell you, I'm going to be in the wind again. Uh, the water doesn't look too bad, but it's starting to roll out there, and uh, and the wind is just picking up, picking up, picking up. So I'm just going to get ready for that. All right, well, we're just getting things set up. Um, I got the boat up here wedged between these trees. This is going to act as an extra wind block. There's no wind really coming in here, but that's just to keep it down to absolute zero. Tarp is up pretty high, but it's because there's no, uh, again, no wind in here. And it keeps the lines out of the way. It keeps them over your head. So that way you're not uh, strangling yourself on them. And it started to rain. So the nice thing about having a freestanding tent, once you get the tarp up, then you can just start setting it up underneath. This isn't, this isn't down or anything yet. And uh, I can get the fly on top and everything. And then all I do is just scooch it out a little bit over here, peg it down, and I'm done. And then I still have under the tarp where I can do all my cooking and whatnot. I was hoping that we wouldn't be getting much in the way of rain, but we are, so I changed things up a little bit here just to give me really good security. Um, I rigged the cart, the tarp down low and moved the boat a little further around here. And I even tied it to the, uh, to the tree here to keep it from uh, coming forward. And so this gives like a really nice block and enough height that I can sit in it all right. So we have everything here. I can get into the tent without getting soaked. Uh, Maddie is <laughs> under the tent right now. I've got all my stuff here. So we're in good shape. Well, it's lucky for me that this is my off day because it's uh, not looking great out there. I'm just enjoying my coffee here uh, while the weather, well, hopefully passes, although to be honest, I don't think it's going to change much uh, for the most of today. It's about 12 o'clock right now, and we're one day past our halfway point. Oh, here comes some more rain. So, I mean, it's been a great trip. No two ways about that. I've seen a lot of great sights, and uh, the one thing about covering that kind of distance, you get to see just more stuff. So um, that has been really nice. Anyways, I'm just going to... Uh, enjoy some more coffee here and uh, do a little bit of reading and maybe start planning out my uh, my next trip.
really enjoying this uh, this little shelter here. It's really nice knowing that it could just really kick up. I almost kind of hope it does because if it's going to rain, it might as well rain big. Ah, I love it. I'd said to bring it on, and it is uh, it's bringing it on. <laughs> I haven't moved from this spot for very long. Been sitting here drinking coffee and reading for a while. Maddie's still under the tarp. But you know what? I love it. Oh, this is good. I'm getting excited. Because we have right here, oh boy. We got a badge of blue. That's it. Everything else here is black. Black everywhere. Dark. Black. Nasty clouds. But this little patch of blue. I don't know where that came from, but uh, oh, it's lovely. We're sitting out for this one. A new piece of gear that I got is the uh, is a new map case. I already had one before. I can't remember what the brand was, but um, it got a hole in it, and it just became um, uh, it just became a mess. It just wasn't uh, didn't stay waterproof for very long. This one is, and it was also very hard to do up, it had like a Ziploc seal at the top, and it was very hard to do up, especially in the winter. In the winter, it was impossible. My, I remember my note to self was, do not undo the map case in the winter. This is Sea to Summit, and I am really loving this company. Um, the map case, their uh, Expo, their X-Cup, their... Um, uh, waterproof compression sacks. I mean, pretty much anything that Sea to Summit makes, they tend to make it better than anybody else. That's been my experience. Um, this one here works where it's got a um, just a Velcro seal there, and then it just rolls up, and then you can easily access whatever you want inside here, and then you just um, you just roll it up like so, and that's it. So that goes from being really hard to do and undo to just being able to do it with one hand. And uh, this thing has been great so far. It's really nice size as well. They do make one that is larger. Um, in this case, I keep my uh, my map. I've got two in here right now, actually. I've got one which has uh, the topo view on it, and I've got the standard Algonquin map. I've just been using the standard Algonquin. It's been fine. And in here, I've got my uh, spare saw blade. Or is it right here? Um, I've got a cutting board. I have a... I kept my uh, magazine in here. All in all, I just really wanted to say that the uh, Sea to Summit map case is great. So while we have uh, a little bit of sunshine going on right now and it's not raining, uh, I'm going to see what I can do about doing a wash. My stuff here, I'm going to do my pants and my uh, shirts. I mean, this stuff, I don't know if you can see, but it is just... Filthy. And what I've got here is I've got one of my uh, waterproof bags, and I'm just going to go ahead and stuff these guys into this bag. And I'm going to go down to the lake and I'm going to add some water, and then I'll uh, put in some soap. And what I've got here is the uh, biodegradable soap that you would get at any of your outdoor uh, outfitters. This is the uh, same stuff that I used to do the dishes. We'll add that in and then get this stuff a mix. And then we'll get out the uh, tough spots in our little uh, portable sink. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added the water. It's right up to about here. And I'm going to take my soap here. And we'll, uh, we'll squeeze some of that into here. And then we'll lock this up. Give it a roll on the top. Leave some air in there. Pinch that closed. Like that. And now we'll just shake it up. And just kind of loosen things up in here. I want to keep this up for a few minutes. Alright, so this stuff is well shaken up here. I've let it sit for about five minutes. Now whenever you're using the biodegradable soap, you don't want to be using it directly in the lake because it's biodegradable whenever it's used on land. Um, you just want to make sure that wherever you use it, it's not going to be uh, running off directly into the lake. You want to make sure that it's going to be soaking into the ground uh, before it would hit the water. And so that way the, uh, it will get absorbed into the ground 
and then that's where it'll break down. So we're going to add in a little more water here. Oh yeah, that's, that's some dark water. Yeah, much better. Okay, now we'll set that one aside and then we'll go to the, uh, the pants. Not so much smelly with these ones, but uh, just dirty. I'm gonna try to push the water through it, through the material. Get the dirt out of all the little pores there. I'm just going to repeat that with uh, all the rest of the clothes, <laughs> handkerchiefs that I've got. And then I'll give them uh, one final quick rinse in the lake once everything's uh, pretty much out of them. And uh, we'll hang them up to dry. And this line that I put up here, it's actually uh, two cords. It's two lines, and so I put up the one, and then I put another one, and I twisted it around it. And so I put them on nice and tight, so they're actually, I don't know if you can see here, but there's two, and they're all twisted. So you can actually take stuff and stick them in between in a hold tight, and I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about here, where you take the two lines, and you, you twirl the one around the other, and then you just pinch the items in between those lines, like so. And with the collar, when you put that through, you put the collar through and then you take, so the collar comes through here, and then you just take it and you wrap it around and then pinch it through the next loop. So you bring it through, bring that little corner piece around and that really kind of secures it. With the sleeves, as long as you have the buttons here on the top, then those aren't gonna be able to uh, to pull through, so that works well like that. As you can see, this line can really hold on to the clothes quite tightly, even whenever they're really blowing here. It holds on quite strong. Dinner time! And tonight we're gonna do a simple one. It's just uh, baked beans, potatoes, and hamburger. So the baked beans are just uh, dehydrated. I did these at home. They're canned uh, low-fat uh, baked beans. Always get low-fat whenever you dehydrate because fat does not dehydrate. Um, it'll just end up spoiling. These things come back perfectly. Uh, you wouldn't know that they were dehydrated. And they come back pretty quickly as well, about like 10, 15 minutes. So we'll do those. I'll do those in the, um, in the cup. We'll do the potatoes. I got quite a bit of potatoes. I love potatoes. Uh, these are just uh, flaked potatoes that you buy in the store. We'll do those in the uh, in the bowl. And the gravel is going to be six tablespoons of the gravel, which is the uh, dehydrated hamburger. And I'll rehydrate that in the pot. And I've got some little ketchup packages here that I'll have with the uh, hamburger. We'll go ahead and get that started. All we need for this is uh, boiling water. And voila, there we have our uh, <clears throat> potatoes, baked beans, and hamburger. Nice meat and potatoes kind of meal. And this is all, uh, this is all rehydrates so well. It's a really delicious meal. Got quite a bit left over as well. Maybe Mandy will get a, a bit of a treat here. Really good. Mm. Everything in it. Delicious. Yeah, I got a bit of a problem with my uh, with my big toe right now. It is very, very tender. It's a little swollen and red on the side. I don't know if it's ingrown toenail or what it is, but it's incredibly sore. Um, I'm hoping that by tomorrow we'll be in ship shape. 
And if not, well, uh, well, <laughs> we'll just have to go on anyways. But, uh, yeah, that could uh, make tomorrow a little rough. But I'm not going to worry about it now. It may be all gone by tomorrow. So we'll see how we do. All right, now here's a cool little, uh, little thing you can do. Um, I've done this several times. I've got, I use a lot of these at home, actually. And it's how to make a spoon uh, by whittling and with the uh, with a fire. And we'll uh, split this. There we go. So now what we do is we take uh, an ash or a coal and we put a coal in here and we blow on that and we're going to burn this out. got a nice little bowl here and now what you want to do is you just carve around the bowl and, and carve out the, uh, the spoon so here it is this is the the bowl that uh, I burned out and then you uh, char it very lightly over the fire and it, uh, that gives it a little strength and it really brings out the, uh, you know, your, where you've been carving and it brings out the grain of the wood quite nicely. Here's Manny. That's asleep in her sleeping bag. She's pooped out. It's, um, about 3.30 in the morning right now. Hey, my toe. My toe is killing me. It's this sharp, stabbing, throbbing pain in this toe here. I don't know if you can tell, but it's swollen. It's all red here. Very, very tender. I can't sleep and go through here tomorrow. <laughs> it's my one big day for portages. 16 portages. Oh boy. But it's a chilly one this morning. Very crisp. The fog is really coming up off the water here. Didn't sleep very well last night because of my uh, because of my toe. It's still quite sore. I took some extra strength Tylenol last night, which seemed to help. And uh, we'll see what we do today. I'm hoping that once I get going and I break it in, it'll. Uh, sort itself out because we've got just over six kilometers of portaging today with uh, 16 portages so there's no messing around and I'm not doing the 16 portages because I want to uh, punish myself I'm doing it uh, because that's what you have to do to get into Lac La Vielle. It's just not an easy lake to get into. You've either you've got to pay to come in and you got to pay to get out so I'm going to pay to get out. Well, we're all set to hit the portage trail here. And, uh, hate to leave the site. It was a really nice one. Had a, quite a mix of weather on it. There's our little shanty town over here. Anyways, we're going to hit the road and see what our next site holds for us. Somebody loves me. Look at this. This is, I could have gone for a little more of this <laughs> throughout the week. It's about 9.30 right now. We don't have a cloud in the sky. This has been the first time there hasn't been a cloud in the sky out. I think we're on day 7. But this is more like it. So traveling here with no wind and no current to really speak of. I'm averaging about five kilometers an hour, so that's 
basically perfect conditions with a nice easy paddle is five kilometers an hour. So I would not base every day or an average of five kilometers an hour for a trip um, whenever going solo. I really, I think, keep it at about 3.5. I think that's realistic. So whenever you're soloing, you need to keep your pack up front. And uh, what I've been doing is I've been using um, my front painter here as my bear bag. I've got my little clip here, although actually I haven't been using the clip to attach to the uh, to my bag. I've been just tying it, but I have been using the clip for this. And what I do is I just wrap it around here. I tie the painter onto the uh, front of the boat with a uh, constrictor knot. And then I've got a little thing here, which is just keeps the rope attached. So I got it uh, outdoor outfitter. And then I wrap this around here to uh, until I get the length that I want. And then I attach that to my pack and that keeps up here. Otherwise what happens is the pack keeps on falling uh, back into the boat. And here, the lighter the pack gets, you can cinch it up further and further and further. Um, so whenever you start, you may have it back a little bit because you don't want it to be too front heavy. So this is working pretty good. The only thing is, I can see it's really working on the, the top of the pack here. So I'm um, probably going to end up reinforcing this so I can continue using, uh, using this method. Works quite well. Well, I'm happy to say that my toe is not holding me back. I'm really favoring it. It's really quite sore. But at least I'm able to proceed. It's not hurting whenever I'm bending my foot back when I'm in the boat and my feet are under the seat. And right now, anyways, this is just my first portage. Um, it may be slowing me down a little bit, but it's not, uh, it's not stopping me. God, I even had dreams last night that I was airlifted out of this holding my toe. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I think, we're, I think we'll be all right. We'll be curious to see how it's feeling tonight. I still have some ibuprofen and some Tylenol, so that may help. Maybe I should have taken some ibuprofen before the start of these port these portages to keep the swelling down. Anyways, portage number one down. Two portages down. Three portages. Four portages. Very calm today. Just a beautiful day. Really enjoying it. I'm in the boat right now. Maddie <laughs> appears to have gotten herself stuck. The back leg is too far down the rock. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh there, Bruce. Can you make it, Maddie? Hold on, Maddie. Maddie? 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 Maddie, come here. Maddie? Turn around, Goose. Hold on. Wait. You're all right, Goose. One second. There you go. All right. <laughs> you have redeemed yourself, Goose. I think this is portage number four or five. A little steep down here. And my toe is really starting to take a beating now. It's really hurting, but I've kind of broken it in, I think. And we'll be able to continue, but I'm starting to hobble a little bit now. The 1200 and the 2.2k should be interesting. Portage number five. Portage number six. Portage number seven. Well, we're starting on longer portages in this series. This is, this is a 575, we've got a 1200 and then a 2300. Um, boy, I tell you, you don't realize how many times you jam your toe until it's sore and swollen. Anyways, these are a little hairier portages than 
what I had been dealing with. Ouch! I was getting a little spoiled there. I think these are much, much rockier. Very nice though. I love when these guys decide to travel with you. <laughs> He's been with me for a little while here. Try to land on Maddie's head, but she wouldn't allow it. Oh, I think I might have lost that last count, so uh, better late than never. End of portage eight. We're coming into the next one here. All right, we're on the 1280 now. And uh, yeah, this boat is so perfectly balanced now that uh, I don't need to attach my, my life jacket to the back of it, which I used to do to make it a little bit back heavy. Now, I don't know why it took me so long to figure this out, but what I can do is I can adjust it by pulling the paddle forwards or pushing it back, and then I can get the exact tilt that I want so I can walk with no hands and no rope and uh, really, uh, really comfortably. Portage number nine. Oh, that was a long one. All right, we just have a hop, skip, and a jump, I guess, and where the... Oh. <laughs> Is that it there? And that's a 20. Or maybe... Is this the end? Yeah. So that's the 22 or whatever, I guess, right there. All right, we're just going to go. That must be it. My feet are already wet anyways. So this 1.2... Eight and two point whatever could very well turn out to just be a three. Yeah, yep. Yeah. It's exactly what it is. Oh boy. Every step is uh, pretty painful now with my toe. Uh, this sort of thing makes it a lot easier though. Sure is nice. I'm just getting started on 2.2. Really going slow and steady now. Boy, I really wish I was on a canoe trip because uh, whenever I'm canoeing, it doesn't hurt at all. These portage trips are for the birds. Well, we're just taking a break here. I'm hoping we're about halfway through. Walked for uh, 20 minutes. So normally it's about 50, 15 minutes for um, one kilometer. I'm figuring it's probably around 20 minutes for one kilometer now because I'm moving so much slower. Um, <laughs> with whatever's going on with my toe, I'm sure that what the doctor would recommend is that I do 15 portages walking, six kilometers, get my feet completely soaked, and carry uh, over a hundred pounds on my back while doing all of that. That's probably what he would say, so I'm doing good. It's a pretty good trail actually, so I can't complain about that. Relatively flat. Well, it really is a nice portage. A little, uh, a little rocky in places, but Going up here, very nice. Get to walk by the river for a good portion of it. It's a really, really nice way to, to do a portage. It keeps your mind off of the, ugh, keeps your mind off of the, uh, the length and the, and the, little bit of the pain, especially with my toe right now. I can feel it's really starting to swell up starting to fill the tip of my my shoe, I think. There we go, flattens it nicely here. Ho oh, ho, number 10 is done. Now we have a little bit of paddling to do. Only a couple of kilometers, I think, but it'll be a nice change. And give me a bit of a break. Uh, to be paddling again. Nice to have the longest portage of the trip that was left out of the way. The rest feels manageable now. 
I don't know if you can see all these dragonflies flying around, but there are tons and tons and tons of big dragonflies flying around here. It's quite a nice sight. This is a nice cozy little put in here. Very nice. Well, that was just a bitty one, but uh, we just finished portage number 11. Beautiful paddling continues. It's in short spurts, but really nice. Well, all right, we're on the last biggest or bigger portage. This is a 500. We have, I think, three left to go after this. They're all like, like 150s or something like that. Um, I've been doing the full carry for all of the portages, mainly because my pack is now back at a manageable weight where I'm not like sweating to death and um, all of that. It's still, uh, it doesn't, it's not hurting my legs. My shoulders are okay. I can do like over a kilometer without stopping. So all of that put together, it wouldn't make sense to do a double carry at this point. Um, my toe is really, I'm just kind of hobbling along here. It's really hurting, but a double carry would just be worse because it'd just be covering all that more distance. It's not really so much the weight, it's just every footstep. Um, so whether I got 100 pounds on my back or 50 pounds on my back, it's all the same. All right, port, ouch. Portage number 12. Behind us now. Oh, fast put in here. Walk down here a little bit. Maybe we can find a better spot. Well, we have a uh, 155 that's going to take us around this. I think this is number 13. Either way, we're getting close. Almost there. Well, we just have, I think, a couple more to go. I'm really bonking now. Should get the camp at a decent time. It's, uh, it's about 5 to 3 right now. So I'm hoping we're going to be there no later than four. I think that's that's a likely uh, a likely time that we'll arrive. Um, we'll probably get there before that. So it'll be nice to be able to sit back, relax, and get my shoes off and let my let my poor big toe have a bit of a breather. My feet have been wet for most of the day. It's nice to get them all dried off. Anyways, here we go, the end of number 14. All right. And this is what we just went around right here. Oh, we could have run that. Well, we got a short little jaunt and that's 140 and then we're on the lake we're staying on. How do you think, Goose? This is fun. Matty loves portages. Hey, you don't want this to end. Really nice to be just cruising with the current here. What a awesome stretch. Trees are beautiful in here. Magazine stuff. Oh, I think we missed that last one. Portage 14, finished. <laughs> As we come up to Portage 15. All right. Well, my Vixia camera seems to have just died. It's just not turning on anymore. Change the battery, it's just nothing. So I'm resorting to my power shot and this is this is 
Portage 14. I thought we were on our last one. I knew I'd lose count. Anyways, this is 14. We go across this little lake and then we have one more and then we're on Lake St. Francis and then we're at where we're gonna camp. So we're almost there. Very close. Oh, Francis Lake, my friend. Where have you been all day? Portage number 15. Check. Well, we made it to our campsite on Francis Lake. And I've just been sitting here for about the last 10 minutes. I pumped some water on the boat on the way in because I desperately needed some. <laughs> Maddie's frog hunting again. She has been obsessed with frogs. <laughs> I don't know what she'd do if she got one, but she's excited about the prospect. Maddie's happy to be here. Right, Goose? <laughs> All right, well, we've <clears throat> regained some strength here. And uh, I'm just trying to dry off a bit. Very strange, uh, very strange lake or site. It's one of the things where it's, it's quiet, too quiet. Um, but yeah, it really does have a bit of a strange feeling to it. All right, our camera is back. Um, I think it was a uh, depleted battery that I thought was uh, that I thought was good. I had marked it before I left as being uh, as being good, but uh, so the one I had in it had worn out, and then I had uh, put in a new one, which I thought was a new one, and it was also worn out. So this is great. The camera is back. Actually, I'll show you the system I have for uh, the batteries. I got a lot of batteries. Um, these ones here are for my Canon Power Shot. Now what I do is I put a little strip of green tape. And this means that it is not used yet. And then as I use them, I take the little strip of green tape off. You can see there's a lot here that no longer have green tape. I've only got uh, two batteries left and then the one that I have in it out of all of these. I think I've got like, uh, oh, 14 batteries or something like that. Um, for my SD cards, once they're used, then I um, flip the little lock on them. They have the little lock here on the, uh, on the side. So once they're used, then I just lock them and that way I know that they're, uh, they're done. And I do the same thing for my double A's and triple A's, but if I only have one change of batteries, I don't bother because once I change them, then that's it, they're done. So uh, yeah, so that way it works well for uh, for knowing what you have left. This is about two and a half pounds of batteries. <laughs> um, but I guess you just gotta make sure that you don't put the green tape on ones that are depleted like I did. Firewood has been a pleasure. I haven't really even had to leave my campsite. I got a pile left over here of twigs and there's tons of uh, tons of wood here so I think I'll get one get one started up early. Yeah I bonked pretty hard today after all that portaging and feeling a little bit lower than usual so I think a, uh, a fire will raise the spirits and it really is it's strange uh, there is just something almost spooky anyways we'll make the most of it get things started here i still haven't eaten dinner but i finished up my snacks and whatnot and drank a liter of water so kind of bringing things back into focus lots more where that came from
Here we have it. Dinner is served. We have some chili, which has been rehydrated from a can of low-fat chili. This came back great. And we've got some bannock here. And a glass of milk from powdered milk. And to have with the bannock, we've got some ghee. And then I'll have later some uh, honey and some peanut butter. We're good to go. Great camp meal. And we get to watch footwear dry while we eat. <laughs> and Maddie's <laughs> in position waiting to get into the tent. Oh boy. Peanut butter and honey bannock. One of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Great stuff. All right, well, we're in the tent now, and uh, Maddie here is snoozing, snoozing away uh, in her sleeping bag. And uh, I'm just getting ready to go to sleep myself. It's uh, about 9.20 right now, or uh, something like that, and I'll tell you, that was a long day. Uh, 15 portages, no matter how you slice it, is... Uh, it's a tough go. Uh, I was really bonking at the end. Probably about a uh, portage, like 11 or 12, I was really starting to uh, really starting to feel it. My toe was just unforgiving. I'm going to have to get that checked out whenever I get back, but at least there's no pain right now. I think part of my, my problem was that last night I didn't sleep very well at all, which led to uh, a lot of the exhaustion that I dealt with today. It took me a while to kind of bounce out of that but uh, once I did it was no problem and just really enjoyed the evening and took it easy uh, I didn't set up the tarp I just did the the minimum kind of just what I had to do to get by and anyways uh, feeling great now I'm gonna well feeling great now that I'm in bed <laughs> and I'm gonna get some uh, some good sleep tonight so I'm looking forward to that anyways Another day tomorrow, and uh, looking forward to it. I think the weather is uh, looking like uh, we should get hopefully more of the same of what we had today, which was fantastic. It's the first time that we had like a nice day. All's good. See you tomorrow. Well, <laughs> Maddie's all snug in her bed here. It's about 6.50 right now. Now, as I was saying, last night I didn't set up the tarp. I didn't set up the tarp and, well, you might as well do a rain dance if you don't set up the tarp. Because it's raining and it's cold. Well, there's no time like the present. I got all my stuff all packed up here, ready to go out. I am, uh, I'm all waterproofed myself here. I got all my rain gear on and uh, we got no tarp out there so we're just going to go out and try to get our stuff together as quickly as we can. I'm going to have uh, dry cereal. I'm not going to have coffee this morning. And we're just going to hit the road. See how far we can get. Alright, well I'm going to take down the tent now. It's still raining of course. I've just got all my stuff soaking wet under a tree here um, we're gonna make a break for it as soon as possible I'm just gonna grab all the snacks I have left and bring as much as I can in my little pack here with me and uh, I think we're gonna make a break for it and see if we can make it all the way out it's a long ways to go but if uh, nope no nope, nope, Maddie's trying to find a place to lie down here on my stuff um, poor thing just doesn't know what to do what to make of this her tail's still going though. It's on and off, intermittent wagging. Um, anyways, yeah, I think we're gonna make a break for it because I just put my shoe back on and my toe has started throbbing again. Um, I took two Tylenol, two ibuprofen, so hopefully it'll kick in by the time we uh, by the time we set off. All right, so we're all packed up here and we are ready to go. 
the rain has uh, slowed down to a bit of a, uh, a drizzle and Addie's <laughs> excited just to be moving out. She's been just moping around the site. Can't really blame her. A uh, bit of a drizzle out there right now. Good thing, no wind, no lightning. So um, I'd rather have some rain and uh, not have wind and lightning any days. Now if they would just hold steady at this, this wouldn't be so bad. I can manage this. Just a little bit of rain. It's cold though. Poor Maddie's starting to shiver already. I worry a little bit about hypothermia with her because we still have quite a long ways to go. We won't be hitting home or the car until like, oh, probably like three or four, if not later. And it's only 8.30 right now, so. Anyways, we'll see what we get here. The thing is, is as soon as you start, especially whenever you're solo, if you're going with somebody else, it's a lot easier because you, you can kind of get each other's morale up. But whenever you're going solo, as soon as you start getting down, or as soon as you start kind of feeling bogged down, or going down that path of thinking like, ah, oh, geez, this is terrible, I don't want to go, you got to really switch that off right away. Because um, there's nobody who's going to help you. It's just you. You got to, you have to do it. And uh, the only way you're going to meet your goal is if you, you hunker down and do it. So that's what we're going to try to do. So let's do it. Hey, Maddie. Oh, poor goose. Well, we seem, we seem to have missed our first portage, which is 180. Um, there's a little bit of a rock garden that we went through. I guess that must have been it. So now, this is great. We're at the 500 already. Um, I'm not sure how much of this wet this camera's going to be able to take. Be really careful in these paths. It's really cold. Um, I may have to put on another layer at some point. All right, we just put in from uh, a little 70. There's only to go around this. I actually went right up to it, but I just didn't feel like messing around. I'm getting even more wet than I am right now. My pant legs are still dry underneath. Just having a cliff bar. Get a little bit of energy. I'm really going against the current here, pretty stiff. Got a little bit of a paddle, and then we have a 695 coming up. That's the longest paddle until we get to Radiant Lake. Well, we're on the 695 right now. Boy, this must have been quite a crash when this thing came tumbling down. Wow. Well, there's one more portage after this one, which is the 235. That'll take us into Radiant Lake. From there, from Radiant into Cedar, there are three. There's an 895, a 695, and I think a 700. So, you gotta really think long and hard if I'm ready to do that. The question is, it's just, I mean, is the weather going to be any better tomorrow? And after those portages, I've got about six kilometers of straight lake travel to do. I think the wind will be on my back, and I don't think there's enough wind to cause any trouble. It's a relatively large lake. So, anyways, we'll, we'll decide what we're going to do once we get to Cedar, or once we get to, uh, once we get to Radiant. Uh, quite a crew of the birds here. I don't know what they're running from. They should think I'm one of them. Right here in the rain and wet. Oh, poor Maddie. We're coming up to 235, which is the last portage going into Radiant Lake. Got a little bit of shelter here under this uh, under this tree. Maddie is still <laughs> frog hunting. Um, Kind of nice to get a little bit of a break. Um, not too far, then we're into Radiant. I just really am mixed with what to do with uh, staying in Radiant or not. Because everything is so wet. I mean, the tent is soaked. I am soaked. Everything is wet. And probably about another five hours and we can get out of here. Maddie, come on. Come on, Goose. Good girl. 
So anyways, but we will see. Um, I haven't really been going on about my toe. It's the same. It's, uh, it's big, red, and swollen, and kind of squishy now. Um, I can really tell how I'm favoring it, because my calf muscle is getting very sore on the one side, so I'm kind of stepping on the, uh, on the side of my foot to try to keep the toe from having any real impact with the ground. So I'm starting to feel it now in, in the calf. Well, we're in Radiant now. We need to go all the way down here. That's where the portage is. Right here, it's so shallow. I'm quite a ways from shore. But it's just all sand here, which makes it very difficult to paddle. Um, I just hope that... Uh, I just want to stay close to shore just in case thunder or lightning should kick up. I can move in to shore. I don't want to be going right across the center here. Just not a good idea in this kind of weather. So anyways, we're going to see... Uh, I'm 50-50 I'm on staying here right now. Um, we'll see. Well, that's it. We're calling it on Radiant. Winds are starting to pick up a bit. It's getting colder. Maddie is starting to violently shake. Well, first things first, we got our tarp set up here. I got it uh, just covering over this bench here. And uh, the other edge here is covering the uh, the fire pit generally not a great idea to have your tarp right over the fire pit but in this kind of situation um, you kind of need to to do something like this you just keep the fire really low so now uh, next thing will be to see if we can get some dry uh, dry shoes on and my other shoes I have are mildly dry although I do have some dry socks so uh, that'll help with that Nothing like trying to get a fire going with completely soaking wood here, but we got enough birch bark, so I'm hoping it'll just dry it as it goes. So far, so good. <laughs> that is some seriously wet wood. Check out the plumes of smoke coming off of that. My pack is really, uh, <laughs> my pack's really getting into the thick of it. Anyways, I'm just happy to see that fire going. Poor Maddie is just shivering here. She's even worse in the boat. Well, I've decided to go ahead and put up the tarp, or the, uh, the tent, and as you can see, it is soaked through and through. All the inside is soaked, because having to take it down in the rain. All right, well, we're all set up here. <laughs> He's just waiting to get in there. Well, I gotta say that hands down right now, I feel the worst for Maddie. She is just looking so haggard and so desperate and she is so wet and she's so cold and she doesn't understand why, why she's out here, why she can't just be home right now. The rain has been stopped for quite a while now. And the wind is still quite low. There hasn't been a big change in the weather for a little bit. So I'm contemplating uh, picking up our camp here and pushing on. We've got probably about 18 kilometers to go. Well, this little campsite served me well. It got me all dried up and uh, got me through the worst of the day. So we're going to head out while the uh, weather is permitting. So off we go. Just coming down the, the river, which is going to lead to our uh, first portage here. First of three before we're in Cedar. <laughs> I hit the water within about five minutes of hitting water. It uh, had a little downpour and then it rained for probably about 20 minutes or so. But it stopped now. Now it's just cool, but uh, I can live with that. We're just going up the 860 here, going up. It is up, up, and then more up. It's one of those portages that you're coming to. You see the trees going up higher and higher. Oh boy. Rain has started up again. But, at this, holy cow. But at this point, I've kind of submitted to the fact that rain will persist. Wow. Lots of, uh, lots of uphill. Anyways, we're just going to carry on here, 
And it's about uh, 4.30 right now. So we're making pretty good time. There we go. It really is astounding how much rain we're getting today. How much rain we're getting on this trip. Just finished the portage. It was quite nice. I was coming down to the approach. A little drizzle. I'm underneath the tree here right now. Not too bad here. Maddie's waiting with me. Well, I'm glad I didn't put any up. Anyways, we're going to wait for a bit here and see where this lays off. I really hope so. But we're kind of in the middle of it now. Wow. Relentless. It is really coming down here now. Holy. Well, we're just plugging along here. We're on our last stretch before the uh, 900 meter portage. It's been raining. It's still raining. But we're getting there. One portage left in the trip. Hard to believe. Oh, and would you look at this? Oh, here we come. This is looking like the end of a trail. It's a good thing I'm having a really hard time walking now. Um, I'm not so worried about that now because uh, I think we are just about through here. And thank goodness, none too soon. I haven't heard any thunder since uh, since I started this. I heard it just before. Anyways, here we are at the put-in. So I am gonna get paddling here. I think we got about six or seven kilometers to go. And then we're at the, at the car. Well, our last paddle here. It is beautiful. Really calm. It's just going to be a matter of timing. Right now it's about 6.10. So we just need to get there before 8.15. It should not be a problem. Oh, Maddie doesn't realize what she's in for. She is going to lose her little mind when we get to the car. <laughs> ah, this is so fitting. Just on our final approach. This is the first I have seen the sun all day. I love it. <laughs> Maddie doesn't realize what's going on yet, but we are uh, very, very close. This is Brent Station for anybody who is familiar with Algonquin. And this is Troy and Maddie the Goose signing off on our eight day solo trip. So this is the, uh, the, <laughs> the shot of the toe after the trip. Yee. It's just all, all squishy here. It's infected for sure. Just don't know what the problem is exactly. We'll find out tomorrow.